Welcome back to CBS Mornings on this Thursday morning. A surfer is recovering today after being bitten by a shark off of New York's Long Island. It happened yesterday, and we do point out that these bites are rare, though they almost always involve an adult shark. At some beaches in Southern California, though, swimmers, surfers, and businesses are adapting to life with juvenile great white sharks, which are spotted all the time there. Carter Evans has followed researchers studying the sharks for years now, and he shows us what they're learning about the sharks' impact on local communities. Stunning images of great white sharks sharing the water with swimmers in Southern California's busiest beaches are now a common sight. It's these drone views that have really changed our understanding of how sharks behave around people. Chris Lowe, director of the Shark Lab at Cal State Long Beach, says the juvenile great whites here are up to seven years old and mostly ignore people, but sometimes they get curious. It's no different than a neighborhood dog, right? You're out walking with somebody and the dog comes over and gives you a sniff. And in fact, if you do make a move toward a shark, they tend to go the other way. Exactly. We see this over and over again. We witnessed it last summer. This shark is just swimming so calmly and so gracefully right now. Okay. Let's take it in the beach now. Which is why I'm now comfortable enough to get into these shark infested waters with Lowe's research team. They had me help swim a massive fishing net to researchers on the beach. There you go. Where they capture and tag some of the sea life the sharks might be feeding on. And Lowe says people just aren't on the menu. But on the rare occasion a shark bites a person, it makes national news. The swimmer was badly injured today in a shark attack. After a shark attack. Following a shark attack. The Shark Lab now wants to understand how all of this is impacting local economies. A couple years ago, we had a woman that was bitten. I was at a city council meeting in Huntington Beach, and I heard that there was a $7 million loss in hotel reservations. But there's also evidence shark bites can have the opposite effect. With more people becoming shark enthusiasts, a West Virginia University study found an initial increase in hotel bookings three days after an attack. But after that, the bookings drop. This all comes down to people's perceptions. Exactly. Economist Dee Dee Long is working with the Shark Lab to study the financial impact. Some people might think, oh, I take it really seriously. I don't want to go to the beach. But some people might think, oh, this is really exciting. I actually want to pursue this opportunity. At this Santa Barbara beach, it's now common to see a dorsal fin break the surface offshore. Uh, hello, shark. But the sharks aren't hurting business, according to surf shop owner Sam Holcomb. When I educate the stand-up paddleboard renters about the sharks, very few choose to not go. When people are on the beach, sharks are pretty far down the list on their list of concerns. Tourism so professor Katie Dudley is working with the Shark Lab. People come out here, they go whale watching. Can you see a day when people come out here and go shark watching? Oh, absolutely. That's why this team is so great and unique, because we're coming at it at every different angle so that hopefully we can make a truly sustainable model to help have a thriving tourism destination right next to a thriving shark population in our oceans. And there are so many of them here, the sharks are easy to spot. I found one. He is right on the water. This is the same area where we were just swimming that net to shore. So we just saw our first shark of the day. I'm gonna get on the paddleboard and we'll go see if we can find him. With the Shark Lab team watching. Oh, he's right there. He is literally right here. We you found a great white shark close to nine feet long. Wow, look how big he is. But as we try to verify its length next to my paddleboard. Look how close to shore we are. Look, his fin just broke the surface right there. We discover my balance could use some work. The shark right there. Just zip out 10 feet off. <laughs> and we are joined now by Carter Evans. Uh, limbs and extremities still intact, I guess, Carter. Uh, you got back on that balance board pretty quickly. Uh, you okay? You know, it's a hard habit to break. I, I'm a surfer, right? So I've got to accept that if I want to do the sport I love, that I'm gonna be swimming with these animals. And so I've got to learn to change my perspective here. But listen, I wasn't messing around there. These wild animals have to be respected. I wasn't gonna get so close because my balance is not great on those boards. I was not gonna get so close that I could fall on that shark because yeah, it probably would bite me if I fell on it. So that's something that people should know. You should stay away from these animals. And again, these are babies. They don't look like yeah. it. 
but they're babies. They have not learned how to hunt large mammals yet. They are going to turn the other way when they see a large animal. When they are adults and they're feeding on seals, you don't want to be around. Well, it's very different when you're scuba diving. You, you, when you're underwater, when I'm scuba diving and I see a shark, it doesn't matter what species it is, you're totally fine, you're totally calm because you're in their habitat exploring it the same way you that are. they are. But if it's, it's when you're on the surface or when you're on a surfboard that you see one that you get a little nervous because they do these sneak attacks where they come from underneath you and game over. I don't know. I know it these researchers are trying to... They're trying to change the perception of sharks, right? They call it like a neighborhood dog, but like there's just something about all those rows of teeth that I just really can't get behind. And Carter, when you fell, I was like, I needed you to get back on that board. <laughs> yeah. like, not, like your hurry, leg was hurry. still off the board. It's, it's not the neighborhood dog. It's no. like, more like a stray. You don't know that dog. <laughs> yes. That dog might be dangerous. That's but right. they are immensely That's fascinating right. and wonderful animals, Carter. And I'm glad that you're educating the people, the public about that because they're not, they're so misunderstood and people don't really have a full understanding of them. So thank you. Yeah. Carter, thank you yeah. very much. It's a great piece. Sure thing.